In this video, we're going to solve problem 6 in IMO 1968. For all natural numbers n, prove that if we add up the integral parts of n plus 1 over 2, n plus 2 over 4, all the way up to n plus 2 to the n minus 1 over 2 to the n, the sum is equal to n. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. Before I start solving this problem, there is something that I need to clarify. Is that this new this special symbol is called the floor function. Some people may call that the Gauss function. It's not exactly referring to the integral part. I only use that phrase integral part simply to make my introduction uh, relatively easier. It's actually referring to the greatest integer that is not larger than the number inside. So of course if the number inside is positive then say 4.1 of course we, refer we are referring to 4 and so as in effect the integral part but if we're referring to negative numbers if we apply this function on negative numbers say minus 3.2 then it's not minus 3 well the integral part of this number is minus 3 but the floor floor function of minus 3.2 is not equal to minus 3 it's actually minus 4 instead because only this number fulfills the definition of the floor function so just to clarify this now back to the main problem. All the terms in the sum out of the form n plus some power of 2 divided by the next power of 2. So if it's n plus 4, then it's divided by 8. If it's n plus 32, it's divided by 64, and so on. So I'm going to say simplify one of them. I'm getting n plus 2 plus one half. I'm splitting the fraction. And similarly for the last term is equal to n divided by two to the n and the fraction added by one half. So the key to solve this problem is to analyze what's going to happen to the after applying to the floor function if I add the original number by one half. As in what would have how can I simplify this expression? So to do this, I'm going to write x equals to m plus epsilon. So m is a natural number. And this epsilon is some number that is between 0 and 1. We do not take epsilon to be equal to 1. So epsilon satisfies this inequality. Of course, I'm only dealing with positive, positive numbers x. So now I can rewrite this floor function to be m plus a half added by epsilon. And of course, by definition of the floor function, I can take out the m because m itself is a natural number. So it, it suffices to consider what's going to happen to 1 half plus epsilon. For this, I'm going to divide into cases again. I'm going to divide case into epsilon to be, to be between 0 and a half, where epsilon is not taking the value of a half. Well, for the second case, epsilon is between 1 half, taking the value of 1 half this time, but still less than 1. So this is the first case and this is the second case now for the first case case 1 I should say that 1 half plus epsilon is between one half and one. Most important point is that 
is less than one. So that means is if I apply flow function on this number is equal to zero. So then is equal to m. Well, for the second case, the different thing is that its lower bound becomes not one half this time, but one, and the upper bound is three halves. And so, floor function of a half plus epsilon is equal to one. Now, for this time, the floor function of x plus a half is equal to m plus 1 instead. Now here comes the trick. So we know that to simplify the floor function of x plus 1 half, I need to divide the decimal part, which is epsilon, into two cases. And for each case, the interval of the inequality are both 1 half. So to display this effect, I'm going to double x. So notice that 2x can be written as 2m plus 2 times epsilon. Now for the first case, if epsilon is between 0 and 1 half, then if I double it, it will be between 0 and 1. So covering the entire range that its floor function would take the value 0. And while for the second case, if epsilon is between 1 half and 1, if I double it, it's equal to, the lower bound is equal to 1, and the upper bound is 2. So again, covering the entire range of uh, numbers having floor function taking the value of 1. Now, the, the difference would then be displayed. So now, under these two, with two, two cases, two x would then take two m plus the floor function of two times epsilon, and that's two m. Now well, for the second case, 2x is the same, e is equal to the same expression, but this time taking the value 2m plus 1 instead. So comparing 2m versus m, while well, for the second case we are comparing 2m plus 1 versus m plus 1. So they differ, both differ by m. So I'm going to say that regardless of both cases, 2x, the floor function of 2x is equal to the floor function of x plus 1 half added by m, and m is actually the floor function of x. So I have a very nice identity, which is that the floor function of x plus 1 half can be written as 2x minus x. Now back to the main problem. So we're adding stuff of the form n over some power of 2 added by 1 half. Under this identity, I can say that for m to be between 1 and n, the floor function of n over 2 to the m added by 1 half equals to 2 times n over 2 to the m subtracted by the floor function of n over 2 to the m. Simplifying, we get floor function of 2 n over 2 to the m minus 1 subtracted by the floor function of n over 2 to the m. Now our 
sum in the original problem is adding all terms of the form n over 2 to the m and about 1 half the floor function of it from m equals 1 to n and it's equal to the difference that we have got just now and notice that it's actually a telescoping sum so say for the first term we have n over 2 to the 0 floor function minus n over 2 to the 1 floor function while for the second term we get plus n over 2 to the 1 floor function minus n over 2 squared floor function we can see that the n over 2 terms cancel out we can do similar things for the next term added by n over 2 squared floor function minus n over 2 cubed floor function and the two square term n over 2 square terms cancel out as well so if we keep doing this at last I'll eventually get the floor function of n over 2 to the 0 subtracted by the floor function of n over 2 to the n now 2 to the 0 is just 1 so we have floor function of n and that's actually just n because we've defined at the beginning that n is a natural number and this term subtracted by n over 2 to the n floor function of it and we know that starting from n equals 1 let me construct a table so when n is 1 2 to the n is 2 when n is 2 2 to the n is 4 n is 3 to the n is 8 and so on so we know that when n goes to the next number is in increased by 1 2 to the n doubles so 2 to the n definitely increases faster than n but I'm not going to like prove it very carefully here it's just calculus so we know that n is definitely smaller than 2 to the n for any natural number n so the floor function of that number must be 0 so we've got what we want the sum is equal to n so this is the end of the proof